This presentation covers the types of microscopes we will employ in cell culture. These are commonly used microscopes in laboratories. This slide contains an image of a bright field microscope with all the parts labeled. You do want to be familiar with the parts, their functions, and proper names. Please spend some time in lab becoming familiar with the microscopes you're using. The most common type of laboratory microscope is the bright field microscope. Probably you have used these in microscopes in laboratory situations already. They are capable of magnifying 1000 to 2000 times if the oil immersion lens and immersion oil is used. While common, they have their limitations in cell culture situations. This is because they are good for observing stained specimens on a slide, but it is difficult to observe living specimens. In addition, living specimens growing in plates and flasks cannot be viewed due to how the microscope is set up. The lenses are not in a position to focus on the bottom of a flask or plate. Nevertheless, they are sometimes used even in cell culture, but they will typically be used to observe stained cells on a slide. This diagram shows the path of light through the bright field microscope. Light leaves the source, which is located under the stage, and passes through the condenser before passing through the specimen on the slide. Next, it moves through the objective, the eyepiece, and then to the eye. Of note, light traveling through this path gets inverted during this journey such that when you observe something like the letter E, it will be upside down and flipped when you see it through the microscope. Also, when you move the specimen on the slide, the object will appear to move the opposite of the true movement. If you move the slide to the left, it will appear to move to the right. If you push the object on the slide away from you, it will appear to move towards you. It takes some practice to get used to controlling the specimen movement on the slides. Tissue culture facilities will almost always have the inverted phase contrast microscope in the facility. This is because this scope is able to visualize living cells adhere to the bottom of flasks and dishes. There is no need to kill or stain the cells and the objective lenses are located below the stage in order to be able to focus on the bottom of tissue culture flasks and plates. The light will also pass through a phase plate which will improve the contrast of the specimen so that living cells can be seen. The next image will explain the way the phase plate works. In the inverted phase contrast microscope, light passes through the specimen and then the phase plate before entering the eye. The phase plate shifts the wavelengths of light by a half so that the amplitudes, which is the distance of the displacement in a wave, the amplitudes can be added and subtracted, which creates more contrast. This allows you to see the cells and the structures like the nucleus within the cells much better than with a normal bright field microscope. This image compares the normal laboratory microscope, the compound bright field, with the inverted phase contrast microscope. Notice the upright bright field, the objective lenses are above Above the specimen on the stage. The light source and the condenser are below the specimen on the stage. The inverted scope has a light source and condenser that are located above the stage and the objective lenses are below the stage. These differences are key to the different applications for these microscopes. The upright bright field is used for stained slides, but the inverted is used for living cells in vessels placed on the stage. This slide shows images of the different views. The unstained, more three-dimensional looking image is from the phase contrast inverted microscope, but the stained slides are with the bright field microscope. 
Fluorescent microscopes are often used in cell culture facilities. Fluorophores, the fluorescent molecules, are used as markers for the cell structures. They emit different colors of light. The microscope must be set up with the correct filters in order to visualize the emissions. The diagram explains how these scopes generally work. The light source passes through a filter, which allows the excitation wavelength of light to continue on and interact with the fluorophores on the specimen. The fluorophore absorbs one wavelength and emits another. This is the definition of fluorescence. The emitted wavelength passes through yet another filter. The light signal is often amplified at this point. The light enters the oculars and in the modern setup is displayed on the computer screen so that images can be captured. In more traditional microscopes, the light goes through the oculars to your eyes and a traditional camera is set up, set up on top of the ocular tube to capture the images. I hope this quick overview helps you understand the microscope used in the cell culture laboratory.